Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 6 to the power x plus 12 to the power x equals 24 to the power x. Now, we're going to be solving this problem in two different ways, and let's start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to do what is pretty standard for these kinds of equations. I'll divide everything by the expression with the highest base. In this case, that happens to be 24 to the power x. Why? You'll see in a little bit. My goal is to get 1 on one side, obviously. And then on the others, I want to get fractions that are less than 1. That's why I'm dividing by the largest. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Divide everything by 24 to the power x. And this is going to give us 1. And then 6 over 24. 6 over 24, that is the base. And then here is 12 over 24. Obviously, they have a common factor, so we're going to simplify it next. 6 divided by 24, it's equivalent to 1 fourth to the power x. And this is 1 half to the power x. And that's equal to 1. Nice. Do you see what I'm talking about? We have 1 half to the power x and 1 fourth to the power x. Are they related? Absolutely. Think about it this way. 1 fourth to the power x is 1 half squared to the power x. And then this is 1 half to the power 2x. But 2x is the same as x times 2. So we can basically write this as 1 half to the power x to the power 2. Which means if I name this something like maybe t, this will become t squared. You get that? Very nice. Okay, so they're very much related. And now our equation becomes t squared plus t equals 1. And guess what? This equation has real solutions. Awesome. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and solve this quadratic equation. The, you should hopefully remember this, a familiar expression. Maybe you're already smelling the golden ratio. So we're going to write the solutions as negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be plus 4. And there we go. We get our square root of 5. So this becomes negative 1 plus minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. So those are the t values. And I said that this equation has real solutions. But guess what? One of the solutions is negative. Is that important? Yes, it is. Let's take a look. Now I'm going to separate them and you can call them t sub 1 and t sub 2 if you want. No big deal. Some people make a big deal. I don't know why. But then we have the two solutions. And what is t? t is a drink. No, I mean it is. But in this case, it's 1 half to the power x. So we're going to set these equal to 1 half to the power x. And because our goal is to solve for x, right? Don't forget that. Don't lose sight of the fact that we are supposed to solve for x. t is just a dummy variable. So dummy, right? Now, what does this mean? Well, this means, first of all, 1 half to the power x is always positive. So this is a negative quantity. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. That can't be happening. Too bad. We're going to discard that. Even though t is a real number, it is not positive. It has to be positive. If you're looking for real solutions, of course. If you're looking for complex solutions, that's a different story. And if we have time left, maybe we'll look at it. But I doubt it. So from here, we get the following. 1 half to the power x equals root 5 minus 1 over 2. I'd like to write it that way. It just looks better. And then from here, we're going to solve for x. But how do you solve for x? You can do it a million ways. You can log both sides, but you choose the base. I'm going to use natural log because the natural log comes so naturally, right? So we're going to go ahead and do the following. Let me do, move this to the right a little bit so I can fit my ln there. So we're going to ln and ln both sides. Do you want to put that in parentheses? Fine, do it if you don't like it that way. So now we're going to go ahead and move the x to the front x ln 1 half. Another good thing about ln is that almost all calculators have an ln button, but they don't have a log button all the time. And even if they did, you would have to enter the base. How inconvenient is that? So now, since we're trying to solve for x, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by ln 1 half. 
the natural log of one half and notice that because one half is less than one ln one half is going to be less than zero because if you remember the graph of y equals ln x in the real world right then you probably realize okay we have an x intercept at one if our argument is less than one like one half then ln of that number will be negative like this okay all right cool so this is a negative quantity what about root 5 minus 1 over 2? Hmm. Root 5 is probably about 2.3-ish. And minus 1 is 1.3-ish. Divide by 2. Okay, that's also negative. So negative divide by negative. X will be positive. Make sense? Okay, cool, cool. Is that the only solution? Yep, it is the only real solution. Okay, cool. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And the second method does not always apply... For example, if you had an equation like 4 to the x plus 6 to the x equals 9 to the x, you wouldn't be able to use the second method. Why? This is a special scenario where 9 times 4 is 6 squared. You get the idea? Okay. Does, does the same thing happen here? Yes. If you multiply 6 and 24, you get 12 squared, but none of these numbers are perfect squared. Does that make a difference? I don't know, I'm just guessing. But let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is really, really cool. So this is how it goes. First of all, we use the fact that these numbers have a common factor. 6, 12, and 24, that's what I'm talking about. What is it? 6. So instead of dividing everything by 24 to the x, why don't you divide by 6 to the power x? That makes more sense, doesn't it? Well, obviously, that's going to simplify the problem uh, a great deal, and it's going to give us a really nice problem. Well, in this case, we don't have the, what's it called, the fractions at the base. Oh, I forgot to say one thing here. Can I go back? Thank you. Why did we not find any other solutions? Are there any uh, no other solutions? There are no other solutions. You know why? Because the left-hand side is a decreasing function. That is the whole purpose of making them less than 1. So that we can have a decreasing function and a horizontal line. They can only intersect at a single point. Something like this. You get the idea? Okay, cool. Now, we don't have that luxury now. But we have another luxury. Which is the fact that 4 to the x is 2 to the x squared. You know that, right? We already talked about something similar to this. But you know the properties of x1. So hopefully. Now, if not then go ahead and check them out. Maybe I'll make a video about properties of exponents with examples. Would you like that? Please let us know in the comment section down below. But that's going to be a long video and people don't like long videos. They don't seem to watch them. Or maybe I can do it in different parts, right? I don't know. I'll give it a try. So let's do this. Let's call this u and this will be u squared, right? So u squared equals u plus one. That's another golden equation. Slightly different because of the reciprocating stuff. So we're going to put everything on the same side. And we're going to have to root 5 again. This time it's actually going to be better. Negative 1 plus minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. This time we have the actual golden ratio. How nice is that? So if you split it up, u equals 1 plus root 5 over 2. Or u equals 1 minus root 5 over 2. Uh-oh. Is this negative again? Yes. So there are no solutions. Because as you know, 2 to the x cannot be negative right this cannot equal 2 to the x okay too bad we only get one solution and that's from here but how do you get that same idea 2 to the x equals 1 plus root 5 over 2 and then from here we're going to ln both sides again if we ln we get this move the x and you're going to get x equals ln 1 plus root 5 over 2 divided by ln 2. Let's go ahead and compare this to the first method. Did we get the same solution? Mm, not really. They look different. Uh-oh. Here's the trick. April Fool's. Well, it's not April yet. But anyways, I just said it. ln 1 half is negative ln 2. If you negate this or reciprocate this number, guess what you're going to get? And this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time in another video until then be safe take care and bye bye